Hello and welcome to the July 6th episode of This Week in Esports. It's actually the episode that wasn't supposed to happen, but we somehow found a way. My name is Rikari, and with us we've got a special guest, Mr. Uh, Josh Steinekenstein. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, uh, it's my first uh, This Week in uh, Esports. I'm excited to, to help join in and, uh, yeah, loosened up. We did some jumping jacks. I'm warmed up. Yeah, let's do I it. I did jumping jacks. So we are coming to you live from the Microsoft campus in Redmond, Washington, and we are showcasing Mixer Magic like we do every week. Now, Josh... Since you're on the Mixer team, why don't you tell us a little bit about what that means for this show and what fans can expect. Yeah, so This Week in Esports does a great job of kind of utilizing, as we like to say, some of that Mixer magic. Uh, a great uh, example is basically the FTL technology, which is basically a unique protocol for streaming at a sub-second latency. And it also uses interactivity for the viewers, so they don't just watch, you guys actually participate. You actively help us choose what's going on. I've watched many of the shows, it's, it's pretty cool how basically they can help choose the topics, which I love. But again, the sub-second latency means that we'll sometimes respond to things that you say in chat immediately, basically because it's a viewer's choice. You now, troll us, we'll see it, is basically what you're getting at, yes. Yeah, yeah which they love. Oh yeah, for sure. So nowadays there is a lot to cover in the esports scene, and you are no... New newbies to this, but since you know the show is for you, you get to decide what we talk about via the voting options that you'll see soon above the chat window of your device. So we don't get to choose a thing. We're here. We're he's I'm a beautiful a face. A it's like a roller coaster, man. It's just long for the ride. I hate roller coasters, by the way. I wonder why. All right. <laughs> We've only got 30 minutes each and every week, so make sure to get your vote in if you want to hear your favorite eSport discussed. And before we get into the segments that we've got for you this week, we start this show and every show with a little treat that we like to call Clip of the Week. Nice. So this week's clip comes from the Halo community and Team Envious player Eric Snipedown Rona. Halo, along with a host of other FPSs in the scene, have a rich history of montage releases. Do you remember watching the Halo 2 montages back oh, in the day? Oh, many, 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 many The Halo God, those time. were great. Yeah. Those were great. And this one, edited by Riley Hastings, is definitely one you should check out. So let's highlight this quick part of the montage as to not spoil the whole thing when you watch it later. Here's just a little snip of the awesome. off that right. uh some of those headshots are pretty sick disgusting he lives up to his name i guess <laughs> but kudos to hastings for editing that and of course snipe down for the actual clip and pulling off those pretty sweet uh headshots and kills there if you follow us on twitter which is at this week esports you would know that we have an interview with snipe down coming up later in our irl sports segment here at 3 15 uh so make sure you stick around to hear basically from the montage man himself I'm a little scared of that. We haven't done a Skype call in yet, so this is going to be brand new for both of us, and you get to share in that experience with me. Oh, I'm, I'm ready. Pumped. I'm ready. I'm ready if you are. <laughs> All right, well, you guys had the chance to vote, and those options have been selected. Your choices were Pocket Tournament, Call of Duty, League of Legends, and Overwatch. What do we have, Josh? This week, uh, I'm excited, because uh, today's announcement, too, but you guys have chose Overwatch, so Overwatch won't stop with its eSports news. It's never-ending content coming out of that. From the Overwatch contenders to the Overwatch World Cup, Blizzard is building Overwatch into an eSports to watch this coming year, and that is, they are, they are serious about this. Blizzard has announced a new program called Overwatch Open Division, which will help boost aspiring players like myself to the next level. Now, if you're a master rank like myself or higher in competitive play, <laughs> I knew you were going to pick that up. Good. I knew you're going to pick that up. You'll be eligible to join Open Division and compete with other players and teams in your region. This is only a precursor to the or the eventual Overwatch World League, which we have to say confidently holds the claim to be one of the most anticipated leagues to come into existence. No other league has this much hype behind it, with sports teams being interested and everyone expecting industry-wide changes after its debut. In addition to that, Nate Nanzer, commissioner of the Overwatch League, just released a letter informing fans that Blizzard and the team will be compiling a scouting report on players which will be available to all Overwatch League team owners. 
This is great news now for aspiring players, as this shows the level of dedication that Blizzard is really wanting to put behind basically their league. So you want to check out the esports section on playoverwatch.com and overwatchleague.com for information and news about the game and kind of how you can get involved in this. And also want to make sure you know if that wasn't enough for Overwatch news, there is a new hero to join the squad. I saw that today. I, I know. Was, I, was I, was I was tweeting about it. I was super excited. I was mad that they depict Tracer as like team good. Because every time Tracer kills me in, in oh, PvP. You know, no, no, oh, no. You know how satisfying it was for him to just like wreck Tracer? Yes. Absolutely. I made sure the Mixer account tweeted about that. That's good. <laughs> Did a little uh, OP on Tracer. So Doomfist will be joining the squad in Overwatch. It's not Terry Crews, but the character still looks awesome. And you can play him now. Yeah, you can play PTR. now. PTR. Public test realm, huh? Yep. Pretty, I need to go jump excited. into that. I know I need to go download this game now. I'm off in about an hour or so. Oh, sounds good. All right, well, we are ready to jump into our next segment. Your options were Pockin', once again, Call of Duty, League of Legends, and Street Fighter V. And it looks like we've actually got a tie, so we are going to go to Pockin'. Oh, nice. Okay, so with Pocken, 120, 121 players competed at the CEO 2017 in the Pocken Tournament, which is the North American qualifier for the official 2017 Pocken World Championship in Anaheim. Now, players Su Suikun, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to butcher some of these names, so bear with me, Master took first place this year after winning the Pocken Tournament at CEO 2016 and taking fifth at EVO. Suikun Master faced off with Lucario, Lucario in the grand finale, in the grand finals against player Thulius, whose character of choice is Mewtwo. You had all the names in that one. Woo. That's why I'm going to go I down, because I know the there's names. none left. Now you're just going to pick up and mop it up. Absolutely. The Pokemon company has shown some real support for esports and Pokken, starting with the 2016 Worlds and continuing through these sponsored and grassroots events. Nintendo launched their new esports brand, Nintendo Versus, so we're excited to see what that means for Pokken and Smash tournaments in the coming years. Did you see that? I had no hard names. Yeah, you, you, that you had wonderful. those ands, ifs, coming it's years. almost like we rehearsed this before, and I said, hey, why don't you go ahead and take this one, Josh? Yeah, it's, your all you. it's your first one. You pronounce all the names. <laughs> all right, well, we are ready to move on to our next segment, and your options were Clash Royale, mm -hmm. Call of Duty, which is still riding in there, League of Legends. Which Hanging is in there. Street Fighter V, and we've got... League of Legends. Of course, from that tie earlier, we will jump into some LOL. So if you follow League of Legends, you know that last year there was talk about the future of LOL esports and the wish to create a more stable career path for players, businesses, and owners alike, while continuing to provide long-term entertainment for fans. Well, on June 1st, they officially revealed their plans for the NALCS. There will be three major areas of focus where these changes will be taking place. First is changing league structure, sharing league revenue, and finally, giving pros a larger voice and better protections. That's actually pretty cool that they're listening to the feedback and making Absolutely. sure they're implementing in that process. So with these changing uh, league structures that we've been talking about, starting in 2018, teams will be selected from an application process, meaning teams participating in the NALCS will be permanent partners of the league, thus removing uncertainty while players and owners alike plan their future, basically. So the NALCS will be partnering with organizations that keep their pro players' well-being as one of their top priorities. New financial incentives for each play, each each place in the league with will further f with further financial stability. Man, it's all about that money, yeah. It is. It's all about making sure you get paid too. That's a big thing yeah, in tournaments. Yeah, I've seen that a lot. Important. Everybody wants their money. Very important. So, and Challenger will be rebooted as an academy league where NALCS organizations can field a team of developmental players. That's pretty awesome. Yep. But with the addition of these changes, there will also be a policy where teams can lose the right to compete in the league by finishing ninth or tenth five times over an eight split span. The second area of focus is sharing league revenue. So this will provide a better foundation for teams and pros, creating a healthy and thriving ecosystem for all league participants. They'll be sharing league-based revenues and teams will be required to share a portion of their league-driven revenues as well. Minimum salaries for all NALCS pros will be increasing to a guaranteed $75,000. Wow, that's dollars. impressive. That's that, awesome. That's, that's, not, that's not bad at all. But the pro teams will also be entitled to 32.5% share of the league revenues. One half of the pool will be split equally and given to each org. The other half will be allocated based on the regular season finish as well 
as contribution to fan engagement and viewership. The third and final area of focus is giving pros a larger voice and better protection, which is super important for them, I know. This will basically start with the creation of a Players Association. It'll be launched later this year. Players will be able to vote on representatives to be their voice in the league decisions. The players will eventually assume full financial control over the organization. The application period opened June 1st, so just recently, but it does close July 14th, and partners will be announced in November. We're pretty excited to see how these changes will benefit the next year's competition. Did they get a, it's like the, it's like the a, NBA it's Players a, it's Association. A, yeah, it's like, a, it's like a real pro sports league job. That's amazing. That is some good stuff. Yeah. All right, well, we are ready to jump into our next segment on the docket were Clash Royale, Call of Duty, Quake, and Street Fighter V. And finally, knocking off the list, Call of Duty. We've got Call of Duty. Why don't you go ahead and take it yep. away? So since it's the first time Call of Duty is in the show, actually, we'll be giving you viewers a special treat to show off some Call of Duty hit and misses that will <laughs> that we found on the Xbox Live capture page for Call of Duty. I like how it's hit and misses because I just I want to see those misses. Like, uh, I want to see them bad. Like the hits are great, but the misses just they just roll with it, man. FPS fans out there, it's finally time to talk about the console shooter that's been keeping some of us competitive fans occupied since Modern Warfare. It's Call of Duty, baby. In the 13th iteration, the current game to be played is Infinite Warfare, and Activision has been using their golden goose, MLG, Major League Gaming, to run and produce the eSports League for this game called the Call of Duty World League. Now, the Call of Duty World League is a global competition through North America, Europe, Asia, and Asia Pacific regions, and allows just about anyone to compete and show their skills in front of the ever-increasing Call of Duty community. That's right. The World League is comprised of online tournaments and offline LAN events, in addition to a global pro league, which all leads up to the annual finals event for COD, which is the Call of Duty World Championship. I'm sure we've all heard of that. The Call of Duty World Championship is coming to the East Coast for the first time in its five-year history. It'll be held at the Amway Center in Orlando, Florida next month on August 9th through 13th for five days of epic gunplay and uplink scores. Nice. Over the course of these five days, the top 32 teams in Call of Duty will compete over a one and a half million dollar Ooh. prize pool. Just a, just a little bit of money. That's not much. <laughs> and more importantly though, not a million and a half dollars. That's the important Bragging thing. rights as the kings of Call of Duty Infinite Warfare. We know that's, that's kind of the bread and butter right there. Now every year the event impresses and outshines the previous year's event and we're excited to see what surprises Activision and Major League Gaming have in store for us at the tournament next month. Now, if you're only now learning about the Call of Duty and its competitive scene, now it's pretty much a great time for you to jump in. Qualifications for spots at the World Championship are still contested and up for grabs for you guys and gals to snag. Now, as teams who have been grinding for pro points are making sure they perform their best leading up to the last chain, the last chance qualifiers in the app APAC and NA regions. There's a Call of Duty action. There is Call of Duty action to watch almost every week. And now until the World Championships, you can watch those yourselves at callofduty.com slash esports or mlg.tv. I feel like we had an agreement that we were going to say whack there, but it's all right. You can also go to <laughs> some of those same destinations to purchase tickets for the COD World Championship. And we urge you to go now and secure your tickets to these events. If you can't wait until August, we recommend checking out the weekly matches coming out of the MLG Arena in Columbus, Ohio on MLG.tv, where Stage 2 of the Global Pro League is underway, and it might offer you a peek at one of the teams who will dominate the eventual championship event. Stick, or Stay tuned to This Week in Esports as we provide preview coverage of the World Championship leading up to its kickoff. To be good. Every URL, it's whack, man. Like, you know, like I got to you know, get the everybody else. It's team whack. It's yeah, team yeah. whack. I'm just making sure. You said slash. I'm just okay. trying to represent the slash community. Break my heart, man. Just one, one beat at a time. You're killing me. All right, so we've got something new for you guys. We mentioned it. First it's, time it's, ever. It's 3.15, so we're ready to jump in. One of the goals of this show is to highlight the amazing people and events that happen in the esports and competitive gaming space and give them the recognition they so Absolutely. rightly deserved. There are esports fans out there who don't know that they're esports fans. I mean, to be fair, I didn't know I was until I started watching, and then I found myself watching all the time. Over and over, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so we'll put it on us to educate those fans and bring them into the fold. Every week, we'll try to feature a different personality in the space, and this week, we're doing something special. We have our first live interview with someone who has been playing competitive Halo since 2008 and has the X Games medals to prove his skill. It is Eric Snipe Down Rona from Team Envious. How you doing there? Look at this, we get to turn. <laughs> oh, different, yeah, I like this. Hey, no, welcome to the show. All right, so first off, why don't you tell us who you are, kind of, you know, give us the rundown. What makes you, you? 
Yeah, I'm uh, Eric Snipedown Rona. Snipedown's my gamer tag. I'm 26 years old. Grew up in Indianapolis, Indiana, and I began my professional career in 2008 with the start of Halo 3. So we got to catch a little bit of a montage you made, and I know it's not the first time that I've seen your clips floating around. And shout out to Hastings <laughs> for, for editing oh, that, yeah. that sick little clip there. Yeah, so it was featured in our clip of the week. Can you talk a little bit about how it came to be? You know, how, how long did it take you to create something of that level? Besides yeah, years so of we really be <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we uh, began the project about nine, ten months ago or so, and at the start, just looking for an editor, I had Hastings actually did the intro of one of my other montages, and he's done some work for me on my stream. I knew right away that he'd be great. He's always done really well in intros and uh, closing some montages, so I just figured it'd be something he'd be really interested in. And honestly, the start of Halo 5, I knew this game was going to have quite the long lifespan, so I, had, I knew I had a long time to gather a bunch of clips and... As you could tell with the length of the montage, we, we had quite a few in there, and uh, very proud of the final project that he was able to put together. Now, this is nowhere on my script, but I'm curious and nosy at the same time. Just how many clips do you think you have saved? That's you what I'm, take I'm, a wild I'm really guess. curious about how many oh, clips man. you really have. Honestly, with that montage, I, that was probably about half of the clips I had because we had to cut off the amount of clips I was sending in because every other day I was sending him two or three more clips and it was like, all right, we can't keep adding these. This montage is going to be 30 minutes long. So I wish. I'd say, honestly, in like the 200 range. That's, I wish that's I a wish, good problem to I have. I wish right? I had that many <laughs> epic moments in my Halo career, like life area, to be able to fulfill that many clips. I got a double kill once. Uh, I think I did once. that off a grenade. <laughs> Stuck him in the foot. Now, Close I have a question for you. So you and Team Envy has finished fourth in the Pro League this season. Now, we know LAN is a different beast. So are you and the squad excited, especially after the Beyond the Sticks LAN last weekend? Yeah. That Beyond the Sixth Land, where we're able to all just get together, really had some relaxed time and get to bond a little more. It's always helpful going into a bigger tournament. You know, we place fourth in Pro League. I'm not really too concerned about that this year's or this season's format of Pro League was a little different than last season, a lot less matches. So once you lose once or twice, it's kind of like, okay, well, we can't really get first anymore. We're just going to have to move and improve from there. But yeah, definitely excited for DreamHack Atlanta. I'm more so excited because we got a huge following and a bunch of people who are interested in gaming and esports there that can just uh, can just walk up to the event and watch it live. Uh, maybe oh, wow. people that aren't really too familiar with Halo, they can just kind of walk up and get, get a little better idea of what it's like. That's actually a perfect segue into our next question. I mean, what's one thing that you think people should know about competitive Halo that would get them excited? Like, how do you, you know, how do you attract and, and folks? And tips, I'm taking notes. <laughs> oh yeah, all right, well, Honestly, one of the coolest things about Halo is just the rich history of the game. You know, it's been around since 2001, 2002 competitively. And our scene is, uh, we've seen people come and go as it, as it pleases. But honestly, we're a pretty connected scene. I am familiar with a lot of the AM scene, a lot of the players in that, in that. And it's really not as difficult as in other games to get your name out there. You know, if you're a really skilled player, I take notice of that. If I match you and you do really well, you know, I, I write that name down in my head. And it's just like, this person could be a come up player. So it's a lot easier to get recognized in our competitive scene than it is compared to others, in my opinion. Sweet. Well, Eric, thank you so much for joining us. We really do appreciate it. Good luck uh, trying to whittle down those clips into a usable montage. <laughs> yeah. yeah, thank you for everything that you do. Oh, thank you so much for having me on the show. Maybe I can get another montage out there again. <laughs> Looking forward to yeah. it. All right. Well, again, thanks to Eric. That's, dude, he's, yeah. he's disgusting. And that like, worked. That was pretty dope. I, I know, that was fun, right? Be able to conference right? right in. I like that. Just be able to turn over the shoulder, conference in. I learn, need this for my office for whenever I have a meeting later. <laughs> <laughs> Roll over with your feet up and your yeah, legs in your exactly. hand. exactly. Like okay, it. well, we are ready to jump into our next segment. We've got on the docket Clash Royale, Smite, Quake, and Street Fighter V. And brrrrum. we have Quake. So Bethesda had plenty to announce this year at E3. And including it included basically a new esports offering in the form of the Quake World Championships. The they are putting up a one million dollar prize pool for the final offline LAN at QuakeCon in August, and there's still time to qualify in the team and dual categories. So much money is on the line. Oh, uh, a million dollars. A million here, million here, a million here. I like it. I like it. But the cool thing about Quake is that you can compete solo in the one v one dual category. So no need to join a team or try to like convince a friend to hop in and join you. The game is in a closed beta, which means you can grab a key and get some practice in before the last qualifiers this month. And of course, congratulations to the 16 players that emerged victorious from the first 1v1 qualifiers. To get involved, if you guys want to join this, make sure you head on over to play.eslgaming.com. Sweet. Oh, man. Are you going to join? I'm not. I'm Quake not. Quake and I... I'm, a, I'm an observer. Back in the day, yeah. yeah. I'm an, yeah, yeah. Conscious is an objector. Is that what it is? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's exactly. I'll, I'll be in the is. corner pretending not to be able to get kills. That's what we'll do. <laughs> All right. Well, we are ready to jump into our next segment again. We've got Clash Royale, which is always one of my favorites to talk about. Just hanging in there. Smite 
and Street Fighter V, and we're going to go into Street Fighter V. You know what? I love my FGC folk. I'm going to jump into this one. This is, yeah, this is your bread and butter. Right? So last weekend brought more big fighting news with the Street Fighter V Championship at CEO Gaming 2017. This year's winner was rising star Daryl Lewis, a.k.a. Snake Eyes. And that's what this is. Snake Just Eyes that with in a mind. Z. Snake Eyes has climbed steadily on the Street Fighter circuit with a top eight finish at DreamHack Austin, fourth at West Coast Warzone, and second at Combo Breaker. All bets were on PG Punk in the grand finals, and I got to admit, watching Punk is hilarious because his, his pop offs are. You, get, you just got to see them to believe them, really. They're, is it like watching an artist just paint? We'll say it's like that. That's a good one. <laughs> a, a confused artist. He's won every Capcom Pro Tour event that he's attended. The final match was close, but Snake Eyes took home the CEO belt and 400 points on the Capcom Pro Tour leaderboard, putting him in third place globally. Dang, I'm talking. That's some respect right there. Punk was wearing three different hats of Pokemon. I think it was Charizard, Pikachu, and I can't remember who the third was. And he would like hit you with this tassel, like just well, stuff that would drive me wild if I were sitting there competing against him. Like, come on, man! Like, it just messing with you. Oh yeah, oh, just man. Messing with you. Right. It's fun. The time that you have between matches gives you a lot of chance for uh, flavor. Yeah. And some personality to yeah. shine through. I can it. respect that, man. Throw some personality in between the matches. Get in their heads. I just. Uh, does that get in your head? I don't know. I don't know. It was it was yeah. crazy to watch. It was crazy to watch. All I right. That. So we are ready to jump into our next segment. And it looks like it's already ready to go for us. And we've got a new one up. Yep. You ready for this one? Why don't you take this? Yep. So our latest segment here that y'all chose is Counter-Strike ECS. So the ECS Season 3 Finals kicked off last Friday over in London at the SSE Wembley Arena. Four teams from the European Division and four from the North American Division duked it out for the first place and a grand prize of $250,000. Now, Fnatic and Optic Gaming were the first teams knocked out, followed by G2 Esports and Liquid. So the final four put it between put FaZe against Cloud9 and SK against Australis. FaZe came out strong, and while there was a small dip during Mirage where Cloud9 was holding steady at the front, FaZe pulled an unlikely comeback and solidified a spot in the final. Now, the Australis and SK matchup started out a little more evenly matched, but SK pulled ahead, fighting hard and taking the series for themselves. This meant it was a grand finale between FaZe and SK. Now, FaZe had already lost to SK Gaming technically on day one, placing them in a lower bracket, but FaZe fought all the way up there to the top to make sure they earned a spot up there, so everyone was pretty eager to see how things were going to play out. During Mirage, FaZe FaZe started out really strong and smart, while SK kind of hung back, adjusted their defenses kind of accordingly based on the gameplay they were kind of going up against. Now, this strategy failed SK through as FaZe came out on top with a 16-11 scoreline. But SK's defensive strategies came in handy during Infer Inferno, allowing them to stay in control for m pretty much most of it. For a moment, it appeared FaZe might come back, but SK took it into overtime, winning with a 19-17 scoreline. Now, the series came down to train. SK continued to look solid during the first half, but FaZe showed that they were not done quite yet and managing to make another huge comeback. SK forced overtime yet again, and the dust settled. SK did merge victorious as well as $250,000 richer as you do. I need that in my life. Now, if you follow CSGO, you already know that SK is no stranger to success many, many times over. This Brazilian team has proved time and time again that they have what it takes to beat nearly every team they've come up against. The active squad is made up of Fallen, Fur, Colds, they gave me the names now, Taco yeah. and Phelps. I like Taco. <laughs> <laughs> They'll set you up. They're going to throw something in there. Now, these guys are <laughs> headed to ESL Cologne, which takes place July 4th through the 9th in Germany. And considering how strongly they showed up for ECS, we're guessing they might be seeing the SK game. We Basically, we're going to probably see SK again. I wouldn't be surprised to see their names up there. All right, all right, all right. Are we ready to jump into our next segment? Yeah, let's ready go. Ready to go? Let's do it. Okay, so your voting options were Smite, Injustice 2, Pokemon, and Overwatch Contenders. And look, for the second time today, we're talking... Man, it's, it's Doomfist Day, man. Yeah. <laughs> it's, like, it's almost like we knew this would happen, like everyone's primed and ready to go. <laughs> so Overwatch Contenders Season 0 just wrapped up this last weekend, and the final match marks the first step in Blizzard's plans for an Overwatch esports empire. The top eight teams from the EU and the top six from the North America region will be automatically qualified for Contender Season 1, which starts next month. Team Immortals breeze through the semis, bulldozing FaZe Clan and 
Kungarna, each up or each three to zero. Man, they didn't. It's your turn game. now. Oh, that's not bad. That one's not bad. In the five map final, Immortals beat Team Liquid 4-1, but had to fight hard for each and every point. On the EU side, qualifier underdog Team 123, that was a tough one for me, mm. managed to make it all the way to the finals, but was beat out by consistently strong play from EU United. As these teams build experience, contender season one is shaping up to be anyone's competition. Wow, well, huge congrats to Immortals and EU United for taking home the first trophies from this new league. I need to work on my, uh, my Rhiney skills. Yeah, is that your tank? Oh yeah, oh yeah. I'm Team Rhiney, man. Really? Yeah. I'm I'm all. I love to go in there, shield, and just smashing him to and fro with my hammer. That's why I'm excited about Doomfist. He looks kind of tanky. I, yeah, he's got to be a tank. Like an he's offensive tank. tank. I, I want to know that. All right. Well, we're jumping into our next segment. Your choices were Smite, Injustice 2, Pokemon, and Dota 2. And, and y'all <laughs> pulled off a three-way tie. Word, three-way tie, huh? <laughs> so we're just going to jump into Injustice 2. Let's yep, do it. Yep. Injustice 2 is still a fairly recent release, and it seems like the developers have big plans, including a TBS broadcast this fall. Injustice 2 is currently running through their very own pro league with tournaments all over the globe. CEO 2017 had 400 competitors, and it was a long battle to the top with 16 separate pools contributing to a top 48, not even 32, 48. Yeah, they ain't messing around. The finals came down to Slayer and White Boy with White Boy winning three to one. Slayer was sent to the losers finals to fight Sonic Fox once more. After beating out Sonic Fox, Slayer went back to the grand finals for a rematch against White Boy. Looking as if he got his second win, Slayer took it three to two, leading to a bracket reset. White Boy seemed to learn from his mistakes as he repeated the results from the finals and took the victory 3-1 to one and CEO 2017 Injustice 2 Championship. Nice, nice. Now, as it's a relatively new game still, very fresh, very out, you bet people are still polishing off their strategies and deciding what characters they're going to rank best in. It was surprising to see some, to, for some to see White Boy use Scarecrow and not only use him, but win the tournament with him as well. Now, Injustice 2 continues their pro series with a stop in Moscow, July 8th through the 9th. Then they are on their way to EVO in just a few days. Ready to go into our next segment? Absolutely. We had that tie. So you know what we're going to do? Let's jump into Pokemon. Let's go into Pokemon. Now, Pokemon had their very first North America International Championship last week in Indianapolis. Trainers themselves battled for three days to claim their portion of the $200,000 prize pool in both TCG and VG, VG tournaments. As it's an international tournament, we saw the best of the we saw the best of the best basically show up from around the globe, around the world, and it was the final stop for Pokemon trainers who want to qualify for the 2017 World Championships. Now, the video game side of the tournament saw competitors duking it out in the Pokemon Sun and Pokemon and Pokemon Moon. Australia thoroughly swept every division in its best three matches. In the junior division, two-time champion Nicholas Khan pulled a stunning win at the last moment possible with Pokemon Kartana. In the senior division, Australian Alfredo Chan Gonzalez secured another title for Australia. And in master's division, junior division champ Nicholas Khan's older brother, actually, Christopher Khan, secured the family legacy in a momentous five-round final match. Talk about keeping it in the family for the win. I know who wrote that segment just because we've always had this discussion of what do we call players? Do we call them competitors? Do we call them players? And we said Pokemon trainers. I just, I just know where that segment comes from, and it's fun to be on this side of it to watch. <laughs> <laughs> you had the easy one. I All did. Right. I did. Well, we're, we're just about out of time here. I can't believe that flew by. So we're going to close out our show like we do each and every show with upcoming tournaments. So let's jump into that. Summer Games Done Quick continues this week with nonstop speed running of some of your favorite games and many you haven't heard of. Games Done Quick raised $2.2 million Ooh. for the Prevent Cancer, uh, Prevent Cancer Foundation back in January, and this time they're raising towards Doctors Without Borders. They've raised more than half a million dollars so far, so catch them live this week on Twitch.tv, WAG Games Done Quick, to support them and their organization. Now, over on the Halo side, TeamBeyond.net will be doing another Halo 5 FFA tournament where the winner will nab $200 on this coming Monday, July 10th. So you want to make sure you head on over to teambeyond.net for more details on how to register for that one. And finally, with Call of Duty, there will be a CWL 2000 series this weekend for Infinite Warfare fans and players who are hoping to grind out a few points this season. Go to gamebattles.majorleaguegaming.com for more information. Josh, you did it, man. Heck Good yeah. stuff. Yeah, we, we made week it This in esports. This is a fun show. We still I like haven't, this one. Well, we haven't missed the show because we went to E3 the, the one week. But yeah, thank you right. so much for I'd doing this. I'd be happy us. to come back in. I'm no Kay Yeager, but... 
I mean, I neither am I. Nobody's Kate. I Digger. think we're we're the same height though. No, definitely not. <laughs> I thought you were gonna give me that one. No, right. no, no. Never can I let that go. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. We will be back next week, next Thursday, three p.m. And for those of you sticking around, we have a Forza Horizon 3 event happening today at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern on Ooh. Mixer.com, WAC Microsoft Store, filled with car racing goodness and some wagering tied to interactivity. Yep, we're going to bring that interactivity. So it'll be featured within the Channel 1 as well, where you're at right now. So make sure you tell your friends and your fellow Forza fans to come join us. We'll catch you at our regular time on Thursdays at 3 p.m. on the Mixer channel, as you pointed out. But make sure you smack a follow at This Week Esports and at Mixer Channel 1 on Twitter for more information and to make sure you're staying in tune for the latest updates on what's happening in the worldwide of esports. All right. Thank you so much. You guys have a great day.